Coat Agents Podcast. Welcome back, Lab Coat Agents, to another episode of the Lab Coat Agents Podcast. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm probably more anxious than you listening right now to get into this interview because as we were talking offline, they teased a couple of things based on questions I was asking. And now I want to know a hell of a lot more. Uh, so I am not going to, uh, to spend too much time wasting your time introing these guys. You probably know them from Channel Junkies, Jesse Dow and Jackson Wilkie. These guys are doing some amazing things in the real estate space. And oh, by the way, they've only been in real estate for two and four years uh, individually, which we'll, we'll talk about that. And they are crushing it with YouTube. They've got over 13 YouTube channels. They've done over a fifth, 150 million in closed real estate, 4 million in GCI. And we are going to go super deep on all of this. Fellas, welcome to the show. And oh, by the way, you might have known them from the Northwest. I thought they were Portland, Oregon area. They've both moved. One's now in Arizona, one's in Texas. Gosh, we got a whole hell of a lot to unpack here, fellas. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, there, there is a lot to unpack. And it's funny that you said uh, you assumed that we were from Portland because almost everyone thinks that we still live there, primarily from our first YouTube channel, Living in Portland. I, I remember it well. I know it well, man. I've seen you guys around. So let's assume, though, that not everybody has seen you or has heard of you. So let's start with uh, personal kind of introductions of yourselves and how you got started in the business. What led you up to where you are today? So let's get a little background on you. Yeah. So personally, um, I was actually spent the last, uh, fifth, I got into real estate in 2017, <clears throat> uh, 15 years before that I was in the brewing industry actually. So I got my first healthy dose of, uh, digital and social media marketing back in about 2010 when the company I worked for, uh, said, we're no longer going to do traditional, uh, media buys with TV, radio, and billboard. We're going to go hundred percent into digital and social. Um, everyone thought that they were insane and, uh, but they, brought in some professional trainers, taught us all about how target marketing worked. And basically it was more important to target consumers at the point of purchase or right before their point of purchase. Uh, otherwise, when you're on TV, radio, and billboards, they're seeing 5,000 other messages before they ever got to their point of purchase. And I saw our sales actually double within four years from like 10 million cases with, to 20 million cases of product that we were selling. Um, so, and that was actually in 2010 when the market was collapsed in real estate and actually it hurt all industries. So, and actually in the, in the, I was in the beer industry. So the, the beer industry was hurt too. So people were buying cheaper and I was selling the most expensive product in the category. So seeing our product double in price over four years, actually really enlightened me to see what was going on with, um, digital and social marketing. The crazy thing was, is Instagram wasn't even out then. Um, so it was primarily Facebook and YouTube and Google pay-per-clicks. But um, fast forwarding into 2017, my dad died from liver cancer, uh, January 2017. And then I was actually married at the time and my ex-wife was battling some serious alcohol, uh, prescription addiction and depression and anxiety. And um, I just decided that uh, I had enough of seeing alcohol take down people and decided to uh, do something I always wanted to do, which was real estate. So I just quit my job cold turkey on July 1st, got my real estate license, went in, and it's been history ever since. <laughs> Let me ask you one question, Jesse, before we go to you, Jackson. What was the, uh, so that was totally random segue from the brewing business to real yep. estate. Why? Yep. Why real estate? Uh, well, so back in like 2000, actually when I was 18 years old, I should say. So basically in 2000, I actually tried to get my real estate license. And actually there was a John L. Scott office by my house. And I went in there and I said, Hey, I want to get my real estate license. Cause I was always into uh sell. Like I always thought I'd want to be a salesman of some type. And so I would do my research. This is your dial up internet was going then. So you like Google highest paid careers, like real estate pops up. And I'm like, that seems like the easiest one to do. So I went up to the office. I bought my books. There was a CD ROM they gave me and I went home and I started reading the books. I'm like, this is insane. I am never going to be able to do this. So that's like what ever piqued my interest of uh, real estate and I remember them telling me uh, that the desk fee at this office at the time was 17 grand, but they didn't tell me that you paid it out of your commissions. They just said, you got to pay us 17,000 to work here. Obviously it was a receptionist. She probably didn't really know what the structure was. And um, I just remember thinking in my head, man, if I have to pay this person 17,000, I probably have $17 in my bank account. Like this job has got to pay a lot of money. So it always was in my brain that I was going to, I wanted to do real estate for the sheer fact of the dollars. 
Um, and I just, you know, grow watching the TV shows and, you know, million dollar listing and all that stuff. You just start creating this vision of what you think real estate is. And that's actually what hit me the hardest when I got into real estate was, uh, I learned really quickly, um, that it wasn't that. And I remember thinking, cause I left a job making, you know, one, one twenty, one thirty a year to making zero. And I, I just remember asking, I was on a team and I asked them straight up, where's the hottest leads at? Because I need to make money like yesterday. And they said for sale by owners and open houses. So actually my first year, I still did about 12 million in sales, 23 sales, but it was a hundred percent by a uh, FISBO and open or in open houses. That's all I did. I, I focused hundred percent of my time on that. But after the year went by, um, it was super, it, it took a toll on my health. Um, cause I was working 20 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, and it was just a, it wasn't a lifestyle that I wanted to do. So that's kind of like when the whole, and we'll talk about that in a minute after we talk to Jackson, but that's like what really started to transition us into doing something where Jackson and I both thought that we wanted to get business coming to us. Cause he hated calling. Um, I wasn't a fan of calling, but I was really good at it. And I actually created all my own scripts, um, based on the, it was kind of crazy. Like going through my ex-wife situation, I learned a lot about empathy. Um, so actually calling for sale by owners actually reminded me of people that had a lot of trauma. So I was actually just trying to build a quick relationship and just be super empathetic with them. And actually I built a bond with these people really fast. And that was something that I seen turn on a dime versus trying to be combative with combative scripts and tell them that they're doing everything wrong. We're going to sell your house for top dollar. Like these people don't care about that, dude. They, they think they're doing everything right. And trust me, who are they going to go to when they're ready to sell is the guy that's been nice to them and trying to lend a hand versus the guy that's telling them they're doing everything wrong. So once I started seeing like the uh, transition of getting a lot of listings that way, I was like, all right, it's game on, but it really burnt me out. And also working with people that don't really want to work with you isn't really fun, um, which now we work with a hundred percent of our clientele calls us. They're excited. They're willing to do whatever it takes to get the deal done. It turns into a lot of referral, repeat business and things like that. So it's really given me like a hundred, like obviously we moved, I moved to Scott, North Scottsdale, Arizona. And now I live a life that I really love versus being in this grind of cold calling and for sale by owners and open house clients, you know? So it's, it's, a, it's amazing to see what's happened, but that's how I landed here in real estate. And Jackson's story is actually pretty interesting as well. I love it, man. Now, now I'm, ex I'm excited to hear it, Jackson. Fire away. But first, before I say that, like what he, what Jesse just said, like how many of you listening to this does that resonate with? I mean, probably some of you that are newer to the business, some of you that are still, they're 10 years or longer in the business and you're still grinding like that. This is what we try to teach when we talk about video, when we talk about social media. These guys have mastered it in such a, a, a short time frame. Just keep listening. Jackson, let's hear your story, brother. Well, I'm glad you got that second half out of him because he left the most important, which was like how much production he did his first year and, you know, 20 something plus sales. So my whole about me is crazy because it's it's the direct reason why I get so much business from video. And so I'm I'm from a small town in Idaho, way up north, Coeur d'Alene, which is now one of the hottest real estate markets in the country, which is crazy. But this is a town, you know, my whole life and for the 100 plus years has been just hard work. So there's zero entrepreneurship taught. You're basically taught, hey, go get a job, career, retire. So you log, you mine. You know, I grew up working on a ranch, did a lot of construction, um, was good at sports. So got college, you know, education paid for. So went to college and stuff. But you get out of that. And I, I got into uh, line work. So I was a journeyman lineman as, a, you know, fixing power lines, traveling the country, working storms. And got that hundred plus thousand dollar job in a small town, kind of the dream, right? But I hated it. Like, so the grind of the cold call, my grind was every day union work, um, clock in, clock out. You couldn't show up a minute late, couldn't leave a minute early. And I hated it every day. And so I just knew I wanted to do something. And what you do locally is you ask all your friends and their parents, you know, if they've got a job or something. And that basically trying to rely on other people never worked out. So I had a buddy from South Idaho, his wife and my wife were best friends growing up and they moved to Portland, Oregon. And they came over and were hanging out with us. We were on the boat and I was kind of in this transition of like, I got to get out of this job. And he goes, dude, I'm an escrow uh, officer and you would be incredible at sales. And I'm like, whatever it is, I don't give a shit. Just sign me up, you know? So he went back and kind of worked it. And so they, I, I, I drove over there and met with this title company to be a sales rep for escrow. So building power lines, ranch hand, construction worker to now trying to help real estate agents 
get business, but I've always had a good personality. There's nobody that, you know, I don't like kind of person I can walk in anywhere and talk to people. So I knew that wasn't going to be a problem, but man, what a culture shock. So now I'm in, to me, a huge city, um, Portland, Oregon, brand new, and I'm trying to help real estate agents get business. So the first thing I learned out of the gate was obviously social media marketing, but they didn't really care about that as much as they did video. Every single agent was talking video and every single agent wasn't doing like shit about it really. So sorry about the language, but I started noticing and I'm a very like impulsive guy. Like as soon as I want to do something, I go do it and I, I haul ass and I learn it quick. So I just got a little cheap MacBook, learned video editing. And I was like, all right, that's my, that's my shoe into any real estate agent here. I'm going to help him shoot videos, edit them, whatever. So the problem was when I would tell these agents, let's go shoot videos, none of them would show up. And if they did, they had no idea what to say. And so six months in, Jesse ends up cold calling, getting this $1.5 million, just gorgeous listing, whatever. And, and, you know, has to use our title company. So I reach out to him, shoot him a video message. Like I was all video. He saves it and, and blackmails me with it to this day. And that kind of sparked it, man. It was just like, dude, this kid's small town hustler. And I'm this small town hustler and completely different, um, you know, 180 out in what, what our strengths are, but we just gelled. I remember like not even working with other agents anymore. We were just kind of hanging every day doing stuff and I was helping him. So we started shooting a lot of videos and right at that time, Gary V comes out with this. You got to be the digital mayor of your city, man. Digital freaking mayor. If I got into real estate, I would crush all my competition. So we did it. Jesse never not showed up. And so I was shooting videos for him and about 10, 11 months in after helping all these, you know, older real estate agents with turning their computer on and they're doing 4 million in sales a year. I'm like, dude, I'm on the wrong side of this. So get my license, quit. And, uh, <clears throat> initially start doing kind of what Jesse said. I said, I'm going to do 20 home sales too. Right. So he's teaching me his scripts. He's teaching me the open house stuff. I'm doing all that. In the meantime, I'm doing as much video as possible. Just, I mean, door knocking every restaurant and doing restaurant interviews, but I learned quickly and Jesse just had kind of a hard time realizing that it wasn't for me that, Hey, these, this cold calling and stuff, I could land an appointment, but, but I would never get the listing ever. I can't close business. I can't ask for business. And again, my about me is my whole why of, of YouTube. And so that kind of led me down the path of, of doing this video stuff, but uh, Instagram, Facebook, and we did so many of them. And to this day, even though the police department reached out, wanted to shoot videos, we shot videos with two schools. Everybody started seeing us around. Neither one of us has gotten one call from one of those videos. It was just purely entertainment. And that's what we see with the Instagram, the Facebook. It's just people go there for entertainment. And a lot of times there's no way to truly track or monetize the business that we get uh, from it. So I knew quickly, hey, we got to get these videos in front of people who want them. And that opened the door to, uh, to YouTube and then months and months, if not a year of super pain and agony, listening again to marketers and real estate agents who did YouTube, but didn't do it correctly. Um, I became a true YouTuber and, and very passionate about it. So I'm sure we can talk more about that, but that was really my about why about me and, and how it came into fruition to where, yes, we have 13 channels. I fly in for two days. I shoot 20 videos. I've never even stepped foot there. And, and I have people calling every day, you know, begging to work with us. So kind of a quick about me. One question that I have from everything that you just mentioned was, you know, you started doing these videos more as, you know, you just, you figured it out. Right. But surely you have an education or a background in, you know, videography, you know, video being a videographer or, you know, cinematography or some, right. Surely. Right. You, you have to have that. Right. Or, or tell me otherwise. Yeah. No, the polar opposite. You got to realize I'm a blue collar guy. So I barely even had social media. And now knowing, looking back at it, it was the greatest thing in the world. Jesse and I started with a videographer at the beginning. It was 1200 bucks for one video. It was a minute and a half. And all I did was talk about myself. How many times have you opened a video? Hi, my name is Jackson Wilkie, your top realtor. Well, the whole thing that you need to focus and the, the goal we'll get out of this podcast today is that no matter the platform you're using, I don't care if it's blogging, Pinterest, podcasting, YouTube, whatever, you've got to realize that we're not marketing anymore. We need to content market, right? So content marketing, the definition is answering the consumer's questions. So opening any kind of piece of marketing, answering a question first with a hook. So we use the cinema, cinematography, the videographers, and it was all this glassy, beautiful shit. And just 
no personality to it, right? It was just open up, talk about me. Well, nobody searched about me, right? And so what we've learned is actually the more raw, you know, uh, you know, I got the GoPro, you can see the, the, the thing in the back. I, you know, I stumbled upon the, uh, the GoPro and, and invented the real estate vlog. And what it is, now that I speak at big YouTube conferences, that arm's length slams your face into that camera. It's a little bit shaky, but it is all me. And that's why we attract our ideal clients. They either hate us or they love us. So zero background in it, just a lot of hustle, thousands of videos and never giving up and figuring it out. I love it. And the, and my question was really very tongue in cheek. And, and the reason why is because I want the audience to listen and hear what you just said. Yep. And there's so many people, myself included, we're self-taught. I was taught by a teenager how to use, how to, how to edit videos and stuff. I mean, they, they have those skills. They're just born with it nowadays. Right. Yep. And that's the point. The point is, is so many, so few people are doing this crap because they think they have to have this advanced skill but in reality, it can all be self-taught. And I mean, YouTube's one of the best, you know, one of the best yeah. platforms for doing so. Or mm -hmm. something like the Business Video School. Many of you on Lab Coats have heard of that. That's what they teach. Yep. Uh, so understanding and knowing you have those resources and using them. So, okay, awesome. So this is this is fantastic. Well, Great can I add one thing to that? What's that? Is, um, yeah, I want to add one thing yeah. to that. Is if if you, anyone goes and looks at our channel, like Living in Portland, our top two videos actually. And this is like right when we really started figuring out what videos to shoot versus the videos not to shoot. It's a pros and cons of living in Portland and cost of living in Portland, Oregon are still both they're shot on Jackson's cell phone. And we used to use this wide angle lens that we attached to the phone, no microphone, no nothing. And those are still to this day, our top two videos out of all of our channels. That's awesome. Isn't that funny? I remember I, ha I have one of those clips. Now you don't need them anymore because they're off. Exactly. <laughs> The That's what led me down to what you see here, this, yeah. this GoPro that now every agent or vlogger has, but you know, vlogging before vlogging was cool. That thing was a dinosaur. Um, and that was it. Yeah. You clip on lens and a microphone and then all of a sudden the, the, it was too heavy for the gimbal and the gimbal would fall over. I'm like, good Lord. So anyways, different conversation, but yeah. I love it. Well, and there is, there really is a lot. I mean, first of all, like, you know, Jackson, what you said, I need to mention this. I have a friend of mine who says, you know, real work is digging a ditch and that's what you did. Right. Yeah, and we're all very fortunate day. to be in the field that we're in. Not that it's easy, but by comparison, I mean, let's be honest here. Yep. Um, it's, it's much more glamorous, if you will. Uh, the other thing, Jesse, that you mentioned as well is when you were talking about the scripting and you talk about how you scripted and how, you know, you go to like the core coaching and it's going to be rah, rah in your face and you're going to be, you know, combative. And I love what you said there. This is all stuff that we're not going to talk about, but I just wanted to point that out because I think it's, it's, it's very valuable. That's, that's important. And, and I'll, we'll, we'll obviously be able to, we'll give you the ability to connect with these guys after the show or at the end of the show. Uh, so if you have questions about stuff we don't talk about, this is really supposed to be more about YouTube because I think, you know, everybody knows it. It's the future of television. So having a presence there is extremely important. However, I think a lot of people are intimidated by YouTube because, you know, you're using fancy words like vlogging and you go to YouTube and you watch these fancy, you know, videos, which really aren't that fancy. You and I, we all know how they're shooting them, probably with their cell phone and just doing jump cuts. And it's mm -hmm. not that complicated, but it seems complicated. So if I'm an agent who says, okay, I know I need to be doing this stuff, you know, what's the first place, what's the first thing that I need to learn, I need to dial in before I start this YouTube channel? Yeah, I'll jump in there because this was the biggest problem we had was just placing videos onto YouTube and thinking it works. I've coached agents that have 500 videos on their YouTube channel and they have 13 subscribers um because they didn't optimize correctly they didn't use keyword research and so this is what took me back you know everybody said just shoot these restaurant interviews and put them to youtube and put them to facebook and put them to instagram and share them everywhere and it doesn't freaking work it is a at the end of the day it's the second largest search engine but the code that i cracked was that when I was searching in Google, like Beaverton, Oregon, it was searched 30,000 times a month. In YouTube, it was searched 375,000 times a month. So that's when I realized it kicked me and I called Jesse. I'm like, dude, we got to get out and start showing these areas. So to start very first, you need to one, build your channel with all the channel keyword stuff and metadata so that you can rank. But two um, is, is getting a tool called like TubeBuddy.com, right? The problem was we were shooting all this content and all these videos and you can place them on YouTube. You can do 10,000 videos, but you will never get found. 
you will never get recommended or suggested if you don't nail your titles, your keyword research, your descriptions, your metadata. So a tool like TubeBuddy.com can actually not only help you find a title that may have quite a bit of search, not as much competition, um, but also helps you build that out. So I leaned heavy and, and a lot of people were shooting Portland, Oregon real estate or just you know real estate market updates or inspection process or escrow process. One, those people already have a, uh, uh, an agent. And two, nobody cares about that shit. Nobody searches it ever. They want to know where to live well before they even look at a three bed, two bath house or getting into inspection. And that was um, what we learned. So finding out the titles to shoot um, will help you with which videos to shoot on YouTube. You, you, you just mentioned something there that a lot of agents make that mistake of, okay, I'm going to do video, number one. Number two, I'm going to, what am I going to do videos about? Yeah. Really, in my opinion, the biggest mistake is doing it about business, period, because yeah. nobody is searching that stuff. No one goes to social for that stuff. But when you say that, so, and that is a natural inclination for agents. Well, I'm going to do, I'm going to interview my mortgage guy and I'm going to interview my inspector and I'm going to interview my appraiser and I'm going to interview my title. You know, I, I guess how, when, when you're described, when someone comes to you and says that to you, like, what is your reaction to them? And I want you guys to drive this home because I want people to hear this because it's, you, I mean, I guess in one side of the coin, I'm, I'm you know, good for you. I applaud you for doing video and good, good job, way to, way to practice. But in reality, that's all you're doing because that stuff sucks, right? Um, and so, you know, what do you say to someone who comes to you and says, okay, I'm starting a YouTube channel and this is where I'm going? Well, this, this is uh, yesterday. We, this was actually brought up on our uh, Jackson's live show. And I was in there as a guest, just kind of watching. And someone asked the question, uh, you know, she goes, you guys tell me to do all these, other, these videos that we're talking about now, but a lot of other people tell us to do what you're talking about, which is escrow market updates and things like that. So Jackson actually went into his YouTube channel right there and pulled it up and typed in Portland, Oregon market update. And every single video that was in there only had anywhere from 90 to 200 views. Even on our channels, you can look at our videos from three years ago that are market updates and they're all the same thing, 90 videos, 200 videos. But when you type, take a look at something that's actually being searched and you can just type in your city's name in the search tab in YouTube and it'll tell you what the top searches are. And it'll be stuff like cost of living in Portland, uh, pros and cons of living in Portland and things like that. So you really wanna be giving them what they're looking for. So no one, and even that's what, when people do listing videos too, no one's typing in those addresses. No one knows what they are. And to Jackson's point, those people are already in escrow or they're, they're too far along in the, in the search. These people, you're, you need to catch them really at the top of the funnel. So when people are shooting market updates and things like that is I think they're shooting it because that's where they're comfortable and that's what everyone is saying. And, you know, I shoot hundred percent of my videos from my zoom account here. So it's actually super easy. And I don't have to get my vlog and do all the conversions and things like that. And I do them on one, I try to do all mine in one take, but I think that's another thing too, that a lot of agents do is they, they want to script everything out. So they're, they're scripting out these market updates and things like that. So what we try to unearth with our agents is uh, we say, Hey, like think of a, a time and a place that you love in this city that you, or this park, like what's an experience you had. And that's really what it comes down to is. People want to hear about your, for five minutes, they'll listen to you talk about the, the family party that you had at the park and all the different things. And our average view durations actually on most of our channels are over 10 minutes. So we're actually shooting really long form content as well. We're going anywhere from 10 to 30 minute videos on average now. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll answer that too in a different perspective too, because for some reason, and I don't know when we can stamp it on a timeline, the real estate industry has been just burdened with these marketers or somebody who said we need to be doing these styles of videos. But I remember early on interviewing before we got into the YouTube stuff, like I started doing podcasting and asking people about their video. And I was like, dude, how many sales from it? Nobody could truly quantify. It. And this is the thing that drove drives and drove Jesse crazy as he's very number analytical. Like, well, if they're not getting business from it, why do it? Right. And so for some reason, we've been told to do all these videos about like the escrow process and inspection in, in the market, but nobody's searching it and nobody really cares about it. And it's like, if you were going to go buy a new vehicle and it's crazy, I just bought one and everything's marked up 15,000 over sticker price, just like the housing market. Right. And you have this, this guy and he's coming across your, your newsfeed and all he's doing is inter interviewing the parts guy and he's going in, into the sales room or the uh, sales room and, he, and he's going over the contracts, what you'll sign. 
that that doesn't help you with your vehicle purchase. But if he goes, look, today we've got the new Hyundai here and we got the new Kia. I'm going to go through. I'm going to tell you all the pros, the cons, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything you need to know. And really, I have a family. I got three kiddos. Which one I choose for my family? If you want to know that, stay tuned. So that's the kind of messaging that we've been going with real estate is always just this, this knockoff stuff that nobody searches or cares about. But when we can openly, you know, talk about that Honda, I mean, like the one thing that drives me crazy about it is I got three kids and it doesn't have, you know, captain seat in the middle. So you got to always freaking throw down the seat. Kids are climbing all over it and it's a major pain in the ass. But Kia came out and they got the two captain's chairs. Now my kids can go through the middle. So if you don't have a bunch of kids and you want more, a little bit affordability, go with that Hyundai. For me, I'm not ever buying the Hyundai because it doesn't fit my lifestyle. So this is what we unearthed with our videos was, hey, this is like families, two sidewalks, nice schools, parks everywhere. If you don't want to be in suburbia, don't ever move to freaking Beaverton, Oregon. You want to be more Northeast, Southeast Portland, the shops, the bars, the restaurants, like don't even think about it. This is what we love doing, helping you find your perfect place, right? So we always hit them with those calls to action, which that's probably something we should get to here shortly is the call to action in our videos. But that is something that burdened the real estate industry that we hear every day and why we don't like entertainment style videos. We find the consumer's major question and we answer it uh, and we answer it very honestly. I love it. And uh, one of the things that you guys have mentioned multiple times is what are people searching for? And this is really important for especially YouTube and optimizing and those sort of things. I want to get to hooks and calls to actions. But before we do, uh, because that stuff's equally important, you know, understanding the purpose of YouTube and how to maximize it and how a lot of it's driven through Google searches and things like that. Talk about that because I think, you know, we've, we've driven home the whole point of market updates and interviewing, uh, you know, people in the industry, like that's not that interesting. It's fluff content. I'm not saying don't create it. You guys probably would say the same thing. That's fine. Have it in your channel, but nobody's searching it. It's not going to get millions of views. It's not going to mm -hmm. gain you much. So what, what, how would you describe to a novice who's trying to understand YouTube and understanding optimization and understanding where the viewers are coming from and how to maximize that? So give them kind of a 30,000 foot, you know, quick overview of that. Yeah. And Jackson, maybe you can talk to like why it's important to keep them on the channel longer and what YouTube gauges you off of. Oh yeah, for sure. And but why the, those the would be a bad idea to do. And so that's what people say is, oh, you know, you sprinkle in your listing videos and your your um, escrow process, it's fine. It doesn't hurt anything. It actually kills you. Um, this is a big misconception again. Now having it is, as like, hey, you do have some clients in escrow and you can send a YouTube video to them. That's great. But create a separate account or unlist that video. The problem is average view durations, click through rates. Those are massive in the YouTube realm of getting uh, recommended and suggested. So you actually do not want to use those. They will absolutely crush your channel. So big misconception there. Um, but two, I will just make it easy. Real estate agents have the easiest time on planet earth when it comes to YouTube, because there's really no competition. And it boils down to living in your city and moving to your city. And then from there, it's covering all the major cities and suburbs. Those are keywords. So if I search, what is it like to live in Portland, Oregon, or where should I live in Portland, Oregon? then that is what videos should be popping up, right? And so we own a lot of those searches. And so very quickly, you can understand that by shooting an escrow process video, how am I ever going to get that video discovered in YouTube? But if I can do these videos very centric around my cities, my suburbs, and I can own those keywords. If you look at the majority of all major city suburbs around Portland, you know, Houston now, Phoenix, and these other markets we have, the number one, Number two, number three, number four, number five videos. And sometimes our entire YouTube channel is ranked right there, right at the very top. So it's it's pretty simple at the end of the day. And in my channel, Junkies YouTube channel, I have hundreds of videos on this, but you really need to start tackling and covering moving to and living in your city. That is getting searched tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of times a month. I, I love that. Um, okay, so that is a good baseline. That is yep. a good baseline. So once you get past that, Where's the next place to go uh, with content? Is it, is, it, is it going out to landmarks? Is it going, you guys mentioned parks, a uh, place to take kids. Is it, is it mm -hmm. uh, highlighting restaurants and local businesses? Like what's the next step after the basics of moving to? 
Yeah, I, re I really teach three different methods because at the end of the day, your videos are going to suck if you hate what you're doing. And that's the one thing I've learned. So if you go out in, in the public and you're vlogging and you think everybody's staring at you and looking at you, which I get a lot of, from a lot of people, then your videos are going to suck. You're always going to be stopping. You're going to make sure nobody's looking and it's going to create a, an odd video. I love vlogging. Um, it, again, I, I realized that these cities and suburbs were searched 10 to 15 times a month more in YouTube than Google. So people wanted to see it and we get that boots to the ground approach. So if you're doing the vlogging the way that I do it, I can come to your city right now. I've never stepped foot in or lived in. I'm going to ask you a few questions. All right. Who's moving here? Why? What's like the main focal point? If it's a downtown strip, if it is a large park, whatever that is, we're going to end the day there, but I'm just going to show two or three typical neighborhoods, right? Here's your 400 to 600. Here's your 800 to a million. Um, and we like to show higher price point stuff. And then we end up down in that downtown or whatever the, the, the main focal point is, right? And so what it does is now when people search, what is it like to live in, in you know, Tempe, Arizona? And we show a couple of the typical neighborhoods and that really cool downtown right on the river, the condo living, the stadium. And just be like, look, if this isn't your lifestyle, if you want more suburban, then don't move to Tempe. But that's what we're here for is to show is to answer these questions. You tell us two, three things you like you need. We place it. We know these areas that you've never heard of. So two, if you can vlog, I crushed it early on with the green screen. So um, this is something that me and Jesse both did um, at the beginning, because now if you had a little bit of B-roll or a really cool backdrop, Again, I was brand new in real estate, broke is a joke. It was a very dark time and I had to work my ass off. Well, I had a brand new baby. So his crib was at my feet and I had a green screen on the wall and I could put that camera right in my face and I could make a really cool backdrop. I have a guy uh, living in San Antonio, Greg Foster. He took our course about a year and a half ago. He, he will easily do over a hundred home sales with his channel this year. Nothing but green screens. Now he'll go out and capture a little bit of B-roll to, to cover what he's talking about, but it's nothing but green screens. Lastly, I've got a student too, who, you know, he's doing massive amounts of volume up in Virginia. He sits right in his office with his printer in his background and he's consistent one video every week. Find what you enjoy or what you can get your videos accomplished and you, and you work with that. So you don't always have to go out and blog. You don't always have to green screen. You really got to find the one where, you know, you can sit down and, and get this content out. Yeah, because the one thing that I see, because um, I work with Jax and I, we both have different relationships with the agents. So I, I hear a lot of the complaints and uh, a lot of these agents will like go out and they'll shoot hundreds of uh, clips of B-roll. And they think that their video has to be like injected with all of this beautiful B-roll. But at the end of the day, it just it's just all about the information you're giving the consumer. They could care less really. And sometimes our B-roll gets uh, mixed up. Like we'll accidentally put the wrong shot in and people will freak out. And like, we'll get lots of comments. Like that's not 14th Avenue. That's 14th street. Or that's not Phoenix, Arizona. That looks like, like what, what neighborhood is that in Phoenix? And we're like, Oh crap. That's like a Florida neighborhood. And, uh, but the thing is, is like, you know, we let it go and it's not but that our clients don't know. Yeah, exactly. The clients don't know. They and, have no idea. And so that's where a lot of agents get hung up too, is they spend all this time out there B-rolling, shooting video, and then they go to edit it and it takes forever. So one pro tip that Jackson and I both discovered early too, was like when we're shooting is, you know, we'll do our shots and we'll talk, we'll do our thing. And then we'll kind of shoot some B-roll on the side. And then we have our folders laid out. So it'll be like Phoenix or Tempe park, Tempe uh, bars and restaurants. So then we can just consistently go back to those same B-rolls. You don't have to get new B-roll every single time, but another pro tip is when you're shooting. And if you make a mistake, you just say, Hey, editor, cut this part right here. Or Hey, editor, add the B-roll from Tempe park right here. So you're having that conversation with your editor as if you're there, because a lot of agents, what they do is they go, and even people outside of real estate is they go, uh, they write their email to their editor if they have one, and they're adding thousands of notes at the timing marks it freaking takes forever. So if you just have that conversation right there and let it continuously play without making the breaks, it, it'll save you so much time. Yeah. You, well, and you mentioned the, the, the green screen, which I think is a little bit over oh, that, that's, that's, that's some complicated, that's some advanced editing skills, right? I, I actually think it's easier, although Jackson, you hit on it. It's easier to go out and do it live and out there. H however, there is that, that piece of, are people going to be watching me, right? You just got to yep. get over that. You got to get over something at some point. So either learn the damn editing skills because you can't get over the, the outside piece or get over the outside piece and get the hell out there. I wanted to ask you two quick questions um, about just technicalities here. 
One, is there an optimal time, uh, how long a video should be when you're creating this type of video? And, and two, when we're talking about going out into an area, going into a park, going into a neighborhood, what is the, what is the best, optimal, most efficient way to shoot it? Is it a videographer? Is it holding you know, a selfie stick slash tripod? What is the best way for somebody who's a relative beginner to go out and execute start with the timing first yeah the the, t the length of the video plays massively into the algorithms when the whole goal of, of of any social media platform if you've seen the social dilemma on netflix it's terrifying but they want you on the platform so what are we taught 30 second 60 second 90 second videos that's all people have their attention span for so that's kind of where we started too and that was on the entertainment platforms instagram facebook so I started, you know, really getting these videos out to YouTube and, and they were short three, four, five minute, right? Because that's kind of what we were taught. But as I became a YouTuber, I understood it, it, it really boils down to average view durations of, of these videos. That's how they're going to get recommended and suggested. So that again, I, I show I only work up data analytics. I don't like telling people oh, just stuff fluff, right? Because that's how I was taught and it frustrates me. So with our Portland, Oregon channel, the one that I really you know, created this whole thing out of, or, or, or understood the, the analytics from that we have about 10 or 11 million impressions, which that's 11 million times YouTube has placed our videos in front of people most likely to watch it. It's insane, right? For free. Um, when people find us via search, that channel, uh, the number one traffic source, meaning the way that people are finding our videos is from YouTube search, which sounds amazing. Uh, and the average view duration on that's about four minutes and 35 seconds. So the third driver to that channel um, is the suggested and the average view duration there is six and a half minutes. So why I'm spitting all these numbers out is it started dawning on me. The longer the video is, the longer I can keep people on, the more views I'll get, the more suggested views I'll get. So fast forward now, you know, like my Houston channel, seven, eight channels in uh, my number one driver to the channel now is suggested in browse and it dwarfs YouTube search. My average view durations on those are anywhere from 12 to 14 minutes. So my average view duration of 30, 40% watched is longer than the totality of my competition's videos. So when people search, what is it like to live in Houston or search it on Google or Pinterest or podcasting, it doesn't matter where they're going to get my video in their lap because YouTube goes, holy shit. Every time we play this video for somebody who's even thinking about Houston, they watch it and they watch it for a long time. So Length of videos, you'll never see us do anything under 10 minutes. I would really shoot for that 15 to 20 mark. And some of my best producing videos are that 25 to 30 minute mark. Now you've got to do a good job of keeping people's attention, keeping those AVDs, that average view duration up. But that is how you turn a channel into a search channel to a suggested channel, which is what you want. You want that suggested, that recommendation stuff. So uh, length of video is very important. Monitoring those average view durations. Question two, you got to hit me again, or Jesse can answer. Um, I can hit it again. I wanted to mention too, that goes against everything everyone is taught on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, but that's oh, why YouTube, right. is a, YouTube is a standalone. Here's one more platform. for you, for your audience too. Sorry, because it's yeah. the most important thing on planet earth when it comes to YouTube. Don't share your videos ever because again, I had to become a YouTuber and I started seeing when we first started shooting these real estate vlogs. Now I'm editing these things crazy. And Jesse's really good at social media. So he's like clips of it here, posting it there. And we would post it to what? Real estate groups. And man, you know, cause that's what we were taught. Get it everywhere. You got to get views. That's what marketers teach. Right. And that's what they sell you on is views and subscribers, but that shit don't pay. Mm -hmm. So every time we started sharing it and our videos were getting better and better, I saw him pull out a ranking. And one day I called Jesse. I'm like, dude, every time we share this thing, our click-through rates, our average view durations, they plummet, dude. It's killing our ranking. Let's stop doing it and see what happens. And that really caused the, the major growth. And so now when I partner with agents uh, and, uh, you know, when we partner with agents in a different country, the first thing I tell, or different states, I say, if I see you share any of these videos on any of your social platforms, the partnership is done. Um, and that's what I've learned after doing all these uh, is you really got to allow those algorithms to kick in. I'd rather have three views in one week from people who searched it and found it than 3 million views of me paying for it or forcing people who that content does not uh, belong to 
in, in the words of they don't give a shit about it. Um, I, I'd rather take those three views any day of the week. Yeah, because what happens is these agents go in there, they make their comment, they like it, and then they watch the video for about two seconds and bounce off. So what that's telling YouTube is that your audience now is uh, going to just watch it for a second and bounce off. And since YouTube's getting paid by advertisers, the longer the video, the more ads they can put on there. It just is, and they're just like, man, we're not going to feed this out to anyone because these people aren't staying on the content long enough. Well, and you're confusing it. You're putting it behind the eight ball, right? That's not your ideal clientele. You know, if, you, if you're selling guns, then why go place your videos in front of a bunch of your friends and family? Half of them might be, you know, anti-gun or something and they're not watching it. But at the end of the day, I just got done telling you guys that our average view durations are anywhere from 60 to 90 percent longer when YouTube suggests it. So it's very smart platform. So if you're confusing it and placing your videos in front of your dog sitter, your family, your friends and, and, and those type of people, they didn't search your content. They don't want it. And you're tricking the algorithm. So that's why I want those organic search views. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's how we get suggested and recommended out there to 11 million people, you know, wanting to, you know, <laughs> wanting Portland, Oregon content, right? That's crazy. Yeah. And one of our, uh, Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, well, you answered my question while well, I was going to ask and just yeah. hold that thought. Um, because you know, I, so I, just you guys don't know me that well, but I'm usually teaching the other platforms, right? And and we talk about not sharing because your post will be suppressed because you're sharing a link that's going to take them off of that platform and that platform's yep. not going to put it out there. So there's two reasons now, which I didn't I didn't realize that, but it makes a lot of sense. In other words, your Facebook audience, your Instagram audience has a shorter attention span on those platforms. Yep. They're if you so if you give them a YouTube link and they go there, they're not going to watch the full thing, which is then tricking. YouTube to think that your video sucks. Mm -hmm. This is just, just, you know, trying to help these people understand this. I, I well, love yeah. that you guys said that, but let me ask you this. And we're totally digressing and I'm going to ask you guys to come back for a second episode because we got too much stuff to unpack yet. Um, what about the, 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 the idea that an agent thinks to themselves, but I want to grow my YouTube channel guys. So I have to, and I have 5,000 friends on Facebook and I have 2,000 followers on Instagram. I've got to put my YouTube channel in front of them. A, do you recommend it? And B, is there a technique to doing it rather than sharing a video that actually hurts your videos on YouTube? Well, that's the, uh, that's like something that I learned early is like from having my background in social media marketing was I knew that the platforms did not cross pollinate at all because it's, it's a different type of content for every platform. That's why there's only one Facebook, one Instagram, one TikTok, one YouTube. They're all their own different, you know, you know, monster essentially. And uh, so there is ways, I mean, we always say that YouTube videos are the holy grail of content. It's like the crown jewel. And the way that we look at our content is we want to, we only create content that we feel is organically going to be put in the universe that the consumers can find by searching and that it, so we want to be multiplied out multiple times without having to be in front of the consumer so they can discover us, they can qualify us, and then it's on their terms to call us. So with YouTube, you can take that video and repurpose it into other content clips, say, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, but we love blogs. So we inject every one of our, we have a professional blog writer that takes our videos and she will actually create a whole new blog off of our video. A lot of people will say, oh, just take that video have it turned into uh, words and then post it. And that's your blog. That will not work. You have to get a professional blog writer that will convert your uh, video into a blog, but we actually take our blog uh, videos and inject it into our blogs as well. And that's worked really well for us. And then we also take those blogs and repurpose it into Pinterest pins, which is the only search engine optimization platform for social media on the planet Pinterest, which we didn't even think about, but our blog lady was like, you guys should really think about Pinterest. There's people searching every day, things about, it's all, Pinterest is all about life events. So moving, babies, weddings, food, and exercise. That's Pinterest in a, in a nutshell. So we're like, holy crap. So we started doing about 800 pins a month. And um, we it started driving a tremendous amount of traffic to our um, our website. And then they would hit our blogs and they would hit our videos. So these people are organically finding us. So that was what was really working for us. We still do a little bit of Facebook and Instagram, but it's not like really our realm. So, um, it's really, so like Jackson said earlier, if it's not working, why would we, should we focus our time? Because like I said, now we've, now we're selling, uh, I don't even know in six months, we've sold over a hundred homes, hundred percent organic through YouTube. I don't know. When you're not What's that? Exact. 111 since March 1st to be exact. Okay. So yeah. So in six months, 111 homes. 
So that to me is like, I don't know anyone on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok that's doing that volume. So for me, I'm going all in on the things that I know that work for me. Um, and going back to your thing about, uh, you know, putting it on different platforms and whatnot. One critical error that we made early is, um, was my fault was I told Jackson, I said, dude, we're getting all these views and all these subscribers. One way we can add some juice to it is by putting an, putting some advertising spend on it. And he's like, no, it's going to kill us because it's going to shoot it out to thousands of people that don't want to see it. They're going to click on it and bounce. And, uh, I, I said, there's no way YouTube's too smart to do that. And I said, they're going to put it in front of the people that want to see it. And he's like, I don't think so. So we tried it. And uh, like what, the next day, I actually was showing somebody our channel that was looking uh, to buy our course. And this is back when I was, we were hand selling everything. And uh, I, I said, yeah, check this out. Type in living in Portland. Not one of our videos was there. I called Jackson up. I'm like, dude, all of our videos are gone. He's like, yeah, I put the ad spend behind that video and it killed us. So we instantly pulled the money. And, you know, views and subscribers do not mean anything. Um, for a lot of agents are like, I'm only getting two views a day. And it starts out like that. Is It's a snowball. You go from two to four, then it starts getting a hundred a day. You know, then you go to a thousand and it just starts growing and growing and growing. But like Jackson said earlier, is he'd rather have three views versus thousands of views of people that don't want to watch it. And everybody thinks that the views and the subscribers equal sales. And let me tell you, they don't. We have our Portland channel with the 10,000 plus subscribers over the course of two years. And it does, you know, very well in sales. I think this year we'll do about 60 to 80 million, but our North Coeur d'Alene, North Idaho channel has what Jackson three, 4,000 subscribers now. Yeah, and it four, still does about 50% of that business. Mm -hmm. So, but the thing was, is when it was at 600 subscribers, we closed 15 million in sales. So the views and subscribers don't mean anything. It just, those people are going to come along. They're going to come along. But the biggest game changer, I think, to the business and which I know we were wanting to get to, and this is like probably the biggest change in our business, what really changed everything. One was it was looking for the correct titles. Let me stop you right there, Jesse. Hold that thought. We're going to yep. do that. We're going to do that on the next episode. We've got a lot of things to uncover. Ooh, not enough time. Cliffhanger, doggy. That's <laughs> big, the cliffhanger. Big, big time. We've got a bunch of stuff. We didn't even get to my second question. That was yeah. like 15, 20 minutes ago, which tells you how valuable this stuff is. I want you to write that down, what you were just about ready to say, because we are going to go into that the next time. That'll be, that is going to be a follow up episode to this. There's a lot of things we want to talk about back, back to the question of what's the most efficient way to shoot. Uh, oh, yeah. I want to get more into the blogging aspect of this. I want to get into the Pinterest piece of this. That is, that's sexy. Like that's the yep. future. That's cool. Uh, just the whole idea behind organic growth, folks. This is the exact same thing we teach on Instagram. It's not about how many followers you have. It's how are you connecting with the people that you do have? Yeah. It's the yep. same freaking concept. Pay attention. And I want to get into keywords and captions and that sort of thing. Um, I also want to ask you guys if you saw the the graphic uh, just yesterday that I saw posted that said TikTok has overtaken YouTube on average watch time. So we're going to talk about that as well and get your take on TikTok. Fellas, this has been awesome. We, we went over the 45 minutes that I promised you, and we still have at least another 45 minutes. So I'm glad that I totally cornered you guys on air to say you're doing another episode with me because now you really have no choice. Um, so thank you guys for being on today and, uh, I'm looking forward to doing this a, a second time. And if, if warranted, we'll do a third one. Hell yeah, there, there's a, there's a lot actually, when you just brought up a lot of stuff, it actually just stirred up a lot of things in my brain that we didn't even touch on that. We really need to talk about that are 90% of the way that you're going to get business off of YouTube. So we have, we've only talked about like the 10% part of YouTube. We haven't even talked about the 90% of like what really gets the clicks. Beautiful, beautiful fellas. Uh, let's, uh, we're, we're, I'm going to end this. We're going to get off here. We're going to schedule another one and I'm looking forward to it. And if you're listening to this, uh, stay tuned for episode two. It's going to be uh, arguably better than one. Thank you. Podcast.